Hi guys and welcome to another video. I have a 1v3 breakdown here for you and this can either be fun to watch if you've already done it yourself or it can be informational, educational for those of you who want to try to get better at you know, making it through these situations uh, every once in a while. I'm not saying it'll work every time, but under the right circumstances and when the enemy team is overly confident that they're going to win the fight, you can sometimes swing the odds in your favor and, break, you know, work it down to a 2v1 and then once once you're there work it down to a 1v1 and if you somehow manage to win that last 1v1 it's an amazing feeling so sit back and enjoy some of these insane plays um and i'm gonna break it down for you uh play by play so uh here we go Right at the beginning of this game, my team ended up dying because we got landed on and they quit out immediately, but I didn't lose hope because I did have all of these armors in the middle here and I knew that if I played this properly, I could possibly pull it off with, with armor swaps alone. Right off the bat, one of them pushes me right away by himself and that's, that's that 1v1 that you're going to want to create in these 1v3 situations. You want to make sure you can single out each enemy when you're fighting as much as possible and that's because of their overconfidence to win the fight grabbing that armor swap right off right after was super awesome and i do get pushed right away by the other two while staying on the exact other side of the box somehow i could possibly get that last armor swap that i know is sitting there on the floor i did end up get, getting that that blue armor that was full and that does reset my health once again so that i can have that 1v1 and separate these enemies into single fights all all separate from each other my teammates quit the game that previous 1v3 was a very early game fight so a lot of that was accelerated and desperate but this fight right here is a mid game fight this is like your staple 1v3 right here so right at the beginning i i find this team and i know i'm by myself so as i get shot i i'm pretty much terrified and i i don't think i'm i'm gonna pull this off first thing i do is i pad out and i try to reset my health at the same time but luckily because they're being overly confident at least one of them throws the whole situation into a into a an absolute disaster for them because he pushes by himself and is way more aggressive than the others this moment is actually super important even though i'm i'm kind of taking a lot of fire and I'm, I'm out in the open i am assessing the situation at the same time now i know exactly where my enemies are and i can try to think of a way to solo out this guy that's a little bit closer to me now I'm in a 1v1 and this is where the most mistakes are going to be made because you're so close to tasting that victory. First step, reload your gun. Do not heal until your gun is reloaded because if you get pushed and your gun is not reloaded and you don't get that heal off, you're, you're, you're toast. You have to have those bullets ready. Now you're going to see that I'm standing here at the corner with a view of both sides of the box. This strategy is specifically because I know that he's going to be pushing me from either the right or the left side. And whichever side I see him come from first is the side that I'm going to move my body behind, like the opposite direction in order to to take cover from him the beauty of this strategy is actually amazing because what happens is you slow the enemy down by doing this because when you do this the enemy as soon as the enemy sees you they start to stop their movement and they zoom in to shoot at you i hit a stim in order to not only move out of his line of sight but also move entirely around the box to the other side the stim remains helping me for the rest of the fight here because i do still have that speed boost get one v3 and there it is that's the one v3 this this one v3 is a clutch which means the three enemy team three members of the enemy team did end up taking my teammates out in front of my eyes and I was left 
standing there with my thumb up my ass. I got this guy. <laughs> trying to figure out what to do. This is where we get third partied and not all of us are fully healed. We lose one right off the bat and this is where it all starts to crumble. We need to get Munchin back up on his feet. So Nick it all throws a bounce pad in order to try to reset the fight here. I stay a little bit behind for a second in order to try to cover. What I didn't know was that I was about to get pushed from my right side here and I took cover immediately, but I did take quite a lot of damage. Right here, this is where I almost had no hope that we would win the fight. I was very, very low on health and I knew that they were being really, really aggressive. I do get landed on by a, uh, by a Pathfinder who, and I don't know if he has really, really slow um, sensitivity, but luckily this allows me to get the kill on this Pathfinder because he did not look at me in time. And the second guy right here, for some reason, tries to climb up on high ground from the side instead of the back. And because he does that, he's exposed to me right here. And I am able to get an entire clip on him without him even shooting me once. Only a few seconds have gone by and the entire energy of the fight has swapped from being one-sided to being now very, very equal. I actually did make a huge mistake right here trying to move from from the cover to get to my teammates and luckily I was able to get across the gap but I think that this was actually a huge mistake I was kind of panicking and um, I probably should have healed before doing anything else with health as low as my health is at it's important that when I take shots I'm no I'm not gonna let them shoot back at all I'm only gonna be taking little quick peeks and I want to make sure that I take no damage because I'm I'm extremely extremely low on health Right here, my heart dropped because I knew that they could have probably beamed me. As I'm healing, I take a quick peek by jumping over the corner of this truck. Right when I do this, the enemy thinks that I'm about to engage. And for some reason, he starts to shoot. And because I see that he's shooting, I realize that this is my opportunity to shoot him because he's putting his gun away. And by doing that, I, I'm able to kill the enemy without even taking like barely any damage at all. And that right there is the perfect way to win a fight when you're low health. Yes, bro. The clutch. <sighs> breathe. Everyone just breathe. A na I think he got sniped. <laughs> he got headshotted. <laughs> I have one more clutch clip here where it's a very similar situation. My teammates go down and there's still three enemies remaining. Got him. No way. This is also a very early game fight. So a lot of the stuff that happens is pretty accelerated. Cover the door, cover the door. It's pretty important to be adaptable in these situations. And the reason I say adaptable is because you wanna have a plan A and plan B at all times. So obviously plan A would be the easy way, which is where I get my teammate up and we win the fight based on just having more people al alive for the fight. But the plan B is if they are very aggressive like this, you want to be able to cancel a heal or cancel a revive in order to fight uh, fight back. Some very valuable information is given to me as I'm fighting this, this Pathfinder. I get shot at by the last remaining member of that team from my left side. And so now that I know the positioning of that last enemy, I'm able to reset the fight by using a door. I don't actually pick a side of what what side to stand on yet i just stand in the open doorway with my heel and as soon as i know what side the enemy is going to be going to that's when i pick the opposite side and shut the door get out of here baby ah! nice. <laughs> 
So in this clip here, I am playing ranked, and I'm definitely solo queuing. It looks like one of our team members already quit the game, or we didn't get one. At the beginning of the clip, I'm ex escaping the, the zone, pushing in, and I'm trying to wait for my teammate, but my impatience gets the better of me, and I just take the portal without him. 10 billion IQ! I'm definitely going to be landing on this high ground here, regardless of whether or not there's people. Right off the bat, I didn't really notice these guys uh, under the tree, but luckily I was able to kill one without them even noticing that I was there. And that gives me somewhat of an advantage. Wow. I just really just threw myself into that one. Like unintentionally. <laughs> and they may or may not have just crawled away. Now I'm getting pushed by the team that they were fighting. My teammate right here is coming to rejoin the fight. And he's, a, he's very late to the, to the party. The one thing that he did here that actually really helped was he, he took the attention away from me and he put it on himself. And I'm not gonna let my teammate die for for nothing. Like, instead of healing right here, I actually cancel my battery. I cancel my battery because I noticed that these two enemies are very distracted by my teammate. And I'm, I'm gonna cancel my battery and I'm gonna knock one of them so that, yes, I do lose my teammate, but I also do get a knock in return. So it's not for nothing. I did get an Arc Star stick right here this was extremely, extremely lucky, but I can tell you right now that I saw the lifeline start a res on an enemy here, and because of that, I tried to throw an arc star to somewhat stop them from being able to get that res off in any way that I can. So right here, the lifeline pushes me by herself. When you're in a 1v3 situation, your goal is to create 1v1 situations throughout the fight you want to get into a fight with each enemy individually so that you're not getting getting shot at by multiple people all the time so this is ideal for me that she puts herself in this situation where it's just me and the life oh. i really want to get my health up but it's very very important to reload your gun right before you pop a pop a med so that if you do get pushed you're going to be able to fight back If you're defending a certain area and you get a knock, you're definitely going to want to thirst every enemy you could possibly thirst in that area. Bring it on, motherfuckers! What else you got? Now I, now, I do have two people knocked right now, as far as I know. I don't want to let them get back on their feet at all, so I'm going to need to start being a little bit more aggressive. Unfortunately, I did push a little bit too late because of the smoke and because of the, uh, the fact that they have a bracelet to throw to avoid me um it did actually end up not working out for me here so that was unfortunate but theoretically this is what you're gonna want the loba gets away crawls off the ledge there and they get to reset without their bloodhound i think right here I she goes for head. the bloodhound's banner and she gets beamed what are you doing why, are you the one that I just killed a second ago? A heroic effort, I guess. That's gonna make my game a whole lot easier. So, because that solo is no longer a threat, I'm leaving her down below me as potential help in the next upcoming fights. Pretty sure I can just stay up here, <laughs> actually. Like, these guys have it made right here, because that's, that's where you want to be. I almost wish I could just throw an arc all the way right behind that box and then just bounce over there. I do want to maintain as much high ground as possible. And so I do, I see that this team over here fighting around a little bit of cover on the high ground and I want that spot for myself. And it may or may not My be spot. the reason I end up getting killed, but if it is at all possible to try to maintain the best position in the game, the highest point, the place with the best cover, um, you're gonna want to go for that. You really want to get those armor swaps when you are in a 1v3 situation. Give me the fucking crab. This right here was a very 
risky play grabbing the Kraber here. The fact that it took me this long to grab the Kraber out of the box, it took two tries, that, that, that was a fatal mistake because of how much time I was wasting trying to grab this Kraber. That arc star makes it so that I I actually couldn't get the armor swap off here. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. I really liked that clip because it's in a ranked game and it shows that like even though everyone is really trying their hardest to make it far into the game, I was able to come out of that with was it second place actually? I think it was second. Yeah, I I ended up with second place and I'm pretty proud of that just about it for this video i do have a lot more clips like it if you guys want to see more um videos like this or if you have any questions or if this video has helped you guys out in any way please let me know in the comments drop drop a comment let me know how you guys are doing leave a like if you if you enjoyed the video and uh, don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell for notifications anyway Roby signing out i don't Whatever.